Hey YouTube, we're back here in the 2008 Crown Victoria with some more emissions issues today. So today we're going to be doing the EGR or exhaust gas recirculation valve. We'll do a quick 360 there for you so you can see what it looks like. Alright, so basically I'm getting some more codes on my scan tool. Still can't get the car through emissions. So we'll uh, show that to you here in a second. Go into our trouble codes here. And uh, basically, I don't know if you'll be able to see this here. Let me kind of zoom in for you. That's, that's the code that we're getting right there. So P0401. Sorry, I'm just trying to angle this so that you can see it here. There we go. And basically, I'm hoping that once we fix this, we can get the check engine light to go away and I can finally get this thing through emissions because I finally got a ticket the other day for not having it registered. So, so we got to get that fixed pretty soon. So we're going to go ahead and give that a try today. All right, so here we've got a little exploded diagram of the uh, EGR system. So you can see there's our valve. we got our two bolts here and here. There's your gasket that you're going to want to replace at the same time. And then just our wire connector here that plugs in. That's about it. You'll also see right here, that's not in this diagram, it's in the next one. But you basically have a, a decent sized nut there that screws into that. That you'll have to remove all, as well. So we'll go on to the next page here. You can probably see that pictured here. Right there. Basically, just put it on the instructions here for a second. You can pause and read them if you care to. It's pretty simple though. So there's that. Alright, let's get started. Alright guys, so here's a quick look at the uh, engine compartment. We'll just zoom in right here on the EGR valve so you know exactly where it is. So you can see right where the light's hitting it, that's exactly where you can find it. It's held in just by a couple of bolts there. You can see if you just follow your air intake up here, your filter, up that hose to your throttle body, keep going, and that'll be your EGR valve right there. So, first things first, we're going to go ahead and just get right on in here and uh, undo our vacuum line there. That should just pull right out. bit of elbow grease there. Perfect. So that comes right out there. We're also going to want to undo this hose just to get it out of the way here. That should just flip right back. And then next thing we're going to do is just pull off. Let me get the light over here. Just pull off our little uh, connector plate here. I don't know if you can see it or not. That kind of like L-shaped thing right there. Just held in by two 10 millimeter bolts. And that just makes it easier to get the uh, big hose off right there that I'm shining the light at. Let me zoom in on that there. That guy right there. So we're going to do that quickly. Again, it's held in by just two 10 millimeter bolts. So for the sake of time, I'm just going to do that off the video quickly. Alright guys, here's that part I was just talking about here. That little bracket, just so you can see what it looks like when you're looking for it on your car. You got one bolt that sits lower here than this one. So that's what you're looking for there. Like I said, just two of these little 10 millimeter bolts and that comes right off. All right, now before we actually pull off the two uh, 10 millimeter bolts here, you got one right there, one right there. We're gonna do that last. You can see the whole EGR valve there. We're actually gonna go ahead and pull this connector off here. Hopefully we'll focus here any second now. Take a look there. That's a connector we're looking to pull off there. So, uh, not sure exactly what size. I'm going to play around with that and I'll let you know in a second. And you just pull that off before you pull those bolts off. Because basically if that thing is not held in place, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to get that off. Alright guys, for that connector we ended up using a uh, 1 and 1 8 inch uh, wrench here. We broke out the big guns for this project. So, biggest wrench we got here in the firehouse where I'm working today. So anyways, we'll go right in here, and now it should be 
finger tight, hopefully. Just get in there. And just for time's sake, I'll just do that off the video. You get the idea there. All right, so we've finally gotten that nut out of here. So you can just, once that's all loosened up, it should just slide right back. And this whole connector there, you can see, just slides right out. So the very last thing we should have to do here, after we get our electrical connector off, of course, which just presses in on the top and slides right off there. Got your six pin connector. Very last thing we gotta do is those two 10 millimeter bolts that we've been talking about. So I've already gotten those off with my open end wrench. I just broke them and I'm just gonna unscrew them with my finger. So I'll do that off the video just for time's sake here. All right, folks, so we got our old EJR valve here. Came off once I got those two 10 millimeter bolts off. I only got one left in there right now. Now basically one warning before you do this, just keep an eye for this floppy little gasket here. Just make sure it doesn't fall off to somewhere where you can't reach it because that's a pain to get. You'll have to get a magnet stick or something. So just be careful with that. We'll just put this to the side here. Let me just quickly show you where it came from so you get a better idea now that it's gone. So again, right there where the light's sitting. You can see the hose we pulled off there. That's where your two 10 millimeter bolts go. There's your uh, vacuum connector. So you get the idea, it goes right there. So we'll go ahead and get our new one ready. All right guys, so here's our new EGR valve that I showed you before. Basically, I've got it prepped with the uh, gasket here. We've got that thin middle gasket that I showed you on the old one. Then we've also got a little uh, rubber or whatever material that is gasket that also came with it. I bought this one from AutoZone. Bought it from their website. So uh, there's that. So let's go ahead and put it in. First thing we're going to do is those two 10 millimeter bolts again. So we'll get started on that. Just for time's sake again, we're going to skip that. Alright guys, so there we go. That's uh, just about back in place. I'm just going to give these uh, bolts one last little turn here. We want to make sure we crush in that gasket so we're not leaking our exhaust out of here. So then you're going to get a bunch of all their emissions codes, you know, like you are got a EGR flow problem or you got you got exhaust gas leaking, whatever code it wants to throw at you then just so you can't get your car through emissions. So anyways, there we go. That's all tightened up now. So, next thing, we're going back over to this guy here, our friend, the uh, bigger nut. We got the Dire Straits in the background there, one of my favorites. So we're going to just get this guy in finger tight here. And we'll, uh, we'll come back to that in a minute once I get it all set. Alright guys, so we finally finished up getting this guy in with our 1 and 1 8 inch uh, open end wrench there. At least that's what I chose to use. So my next step, I mean you can do this out of order if you like, but I, I personally find it easiest to uh, put this fella back in first. So basically what you're going to want to do is make sure you have him facing, first of all get it under that hose, as you can see there. And basically, let me pull it back out so I can show you. Make sure that we have this, and you can see that one end is kind of lower than the other. This end is lower than this end. So you want this end that's lower to be facing towards your EGR valve that we just put in. So, basically, again, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and uh, you get the idea there. It goes right in there where I showed you before and it's just the two 10 millimeter bolts so we'll take care of that quickly. Alright, now that that plate right there is back in place where we had it before, we're almost all set here. So we're going to go ahead and plug in our uh, six pin wire harness there. Should hear a nice click. Get our vacuum lines back in. Can't believe my hands actually got dirty for this. I thought, uh, thought it was pretty clean in here. And don't forget about this guy that we flipped over here to unplug to gain access to that plate over there. So flip him back over, should just click right in as you press. And uh, we'll just over look everything over here again, make sure we didn't miss anything. It doesn't look like we did. And that should be just about that. We'll go inside and reset our code and see if it fires up. All right, so we're back here with the scan tool. We're gonna go ahead and connect to the car once more. All right. Yeah, yeah, press any key. 
And we're just going to go ahead and get rid of these codes right now. And hopefully after driving it around, they won't come back. So no, yeah, 5 sure. I'll be clear. There's that. We'll wait for it to erase. Alright, yes, for sure. Go ahead and do it. There we go. All reset. Our check engine light's still on just because we're... It should go off once we start it. So let's see if the car starts up. Alright. Looks like it starts right up. We've still got our tire pressure light there, of course, because that's just acting weird. But, as you can see, our check engine light's reset, so we'll drive around for a bit and see if it comes back on. Hopefully it won't. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or anything, just leave them in the comments and we'll uh, see if we can get around to them. Thanks.